Today we're covering the fuel system. We're going to talk about hoses, pumps, filters, clamps, people yelling next door, they're interrupting the video. It's all good. You could try to play, but you're never gonna be me. If the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody ants stain from the people who deceive me. Bloody ants break through the chains, go free me. We are talking about fuel systems for your modern engine swaps, whether it be an LS or a Hemi, because they're both very similar. We're going to cover hoses, pumps, filters, and clamps even. Maybe even get into the tanks a little bit. We might even discuss some of the safety items that you should keep nearby. All right, perfect. Nope, that was a bad idea. So when it comes to fuel systems, not everything is created equal. There's just plain bad ideas. There's, hey, that'll work. Don't worry about it. I got a prescription scope. There's a, hey, that's pretty good. And there's, wow, shiny. Shiny. Let's be bad guys. Let's do that. Let's start with the hoses. We're gonna start with the very basic hose here, which, not to be mistaken for a vacuum line, is just fuel line. This is good for carbureted engines, but if we take a look at the end of that, you can see I can squeeze that closed pretty easily with my fingers. It's very inexpensive compared to the other ones. Very flexible, easily bent. Those are some of the pros. What are some of the cons? Well, it's not protected from any brace of damage. It can easily be rubbed through. Second con is it's not rated for a lot of pressure. You know, maybe 30 PSI or something like that. This will eventually burst on a pressurized fuel injection system. This is what we call a bad idea. Don't do it. Well, this is specific for fuel injection. Why? Because it's reinforced. It's stronger, it's stiffer. And we take a look at the end of this and I cannot pinch that closed with my fingers. Yeah, I can get it pretty close, but it's a lot harder. This is rated for a lot more pressure than that line. What are some of the advantages? Well, it's still relatively inexpensive, probably twice as much, at least twice as much as the other hose, as the regular hose. It's still very flexible. It can bend quite well, and it's reinforced to withstand the pressure of the fuel injection system. This is good to probably at least 100 PSI, if not more. What are some of the disadvantages? Well, just like our other line, it's not protected. It can be easily chafed through, rub, get some damage that way, but that's pretty much its only disadvantage. Oh wait, there is another one. It is susceptible to the ethanol fuels, the alcohol fuels, it can degrade this line. That is one of the problems you're gonna run into with the rubber lines. This is the first mistake a lot of people use, is using the wrong line for the fuel and pressure, and it can possibly burst. All right, let's move on to our next line. So the next step up is this nice braided line. Look at that. Got the rubber fuel injection line, nice braided coating, and we can put some AN fittings on it. So what are the advantages of this? Well, it's still very flexible. It's very well protected. The nylon protects the rubber from being worn through. You can customize it. You can put different fittings on it and you can have a hard line attachment. So you got a really positive engagement with a very small chance of leaks. Reinforced, it's very strong and you can run it the entire length of the vehicle. It's a great option at a reasonable price point. But let's talk about some of the cons. Con number one, let's be friends. It's thick, it's hard to get through tight spots. Con number two, I'm going to make this very simple for you. It's a fair bit more expensive than our other lines, but it's still fairly reasonable. Con number three, it is still susceptible to alcohol fuels which will degrade this. So if you're gonna run ethanol or E85, whatnot, this'll work, but it will eventually degrade. Let's get into the next options. Talk about our Teflon reinforced line. What are some of the pros to this stuff? Well, it's very strong. It's very well protected. It's smaller diameter than our rubber line, so it can get into tighter areas if you got harder areas to reach going through frame and body pinches and stuff like that. It can be customized still. You got your AN fittings here. Talk about some of the cons. Con number one, the price. This stuff is really expensive compared to the other stuff. Con number two, it's a lot harder to work with than the other lines. It takes a fair bit of effort to put these together and well, <laughs> it's a little bit tricky to be honest, but it can be done. 
if you take the time and have the tools to do it. Con number three, it's not as flexible as our rubber lines. It only has so much give to it, so we don't want to put any sharp bends to it. Well, not that we want to with our rubber lines, but we're a lot more limited with this. The biggest advantage of this line, though, is it will stand up to E85 and ethanol fuels. It will not degrade. It'll hold in there for a very long time. Finally, let's talk about our metal lines. What are some of the pros? Well, the cost is relatively inexpensive. It can seal up very well once you have that positively engaged. It can withstand most of the fuels. Now the E85 can have an effect. If there's moisture in it, we can cause corrosion in these lines, but it's gonna take a while to really degrade this. Let's talk about some of the negatives. Well, it's a lot harder to work with. That's kind of the big one. You can't bend this easily, and you definitely cannot rebend it. One of the advantages is it'll get in the really tight areas, but very hard to manipulate it into those areas. It can corrode, can rust out, depending on what the material is made out of. Yep, that's about it. Let's move on. Okay, so let's talk about fuel pumps. Well, this is a mechanical fuel pump. It runs off an eccentric, and it is for a carburetor. It is completely useless in a fuel injection system. So we're not even going to consider this. This just sucks the fuel in, pushes it out. So not going to work for us. Our next option, which is the least expensive, least hassle, is an inline pump. This will mount on the frame. You'll have to make sure that you have a properly rated pump for the system. In this case, we need it to have at least 60 PSI, if not more, and be able to flow a certain capacity depending on how much horsepower. It just plums right in line, mounts to your frame, and you wire externally. The advantage is this is very easy to get at. You can change it on the side of the road if you have to. Disadvantages, they tend to be not as reliable. That doesn't mean they aren't reliable. If you take the proper precautions in mounting all these up, making sure you got grab good gravity feed to them, they need to be circling fuel to keep cool. That's what keeps these cool. They're good at pushing, they're not great at pulling. Once you have this wired in place, some of them can be very loud and you can hear it in the cab of the car. Now, depending on what your vehicle's for, that might not be an ideal situation for you. However, it is the cheapest route to go. When you're modifying an old car, an old classic, it's the cheapest and least hassle just to plumb this right in line. Next, we have our in-tank pump. This will mount right inside your fuel tank. It's got the sock and you'll have to modify your pickup for this pump. You also have to modify it so you can run the wiring for this pump. Okay, there you go. That mounts right into your tank. Advantage of this pump is it's mounted right in the source, right in the tank. It's submerged, it stays cool. It's gonna last a lot longer. Disadvantages, if you ever have to service this, dies on you, well, you're dropping your fuel tank and that can be a real hassle in some situations. So, it's a lot quieter, more reliable, and you can get it in a variety of flavors to pump the pressure that you need. Next, let's talk about the tank. Okay, folks, we got the ring loose. Moment of truth, how bad is this tank? Top side's pretty good, bottom side's a little beat up. Inside, I'm guessing is not so hot, but we're about to find out. Ooh, that was stuck. Oh, ho, 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 what a smell. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, it's like glued. What is that? Oh, it's like some type of... Oh. oh, that is... Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't really have much of a choice. But, uh... Let's, let's get a light in there and see how bad it is. It's We don't even have a light and we already know that's bad. Oh, man. Oh, that is, that that is, I, I cannot describe the smell coming out of this. So that is disturbingly bad. It's right inside the tank, folks. Look at that. It's not great. Not great. All right, well, maybe we can clean this up. Okay, check that out, folks. We pulled the canister out of our parts car. Look at that thing, it's mint. Like that is pristine. Got the ground wire on it. The canister's in really good shape. You can hear the float inside. I'm not sure if that's gonna work or not, but the, even the sock is in great shape. But what's even better, check this out. Look at that tank. Like 
that is clean. The only problem is she's a little dented. It is inside there. Look at how clean that is. That is just awesome. Just a little bit right there. But we can use this tank for sure. And with very little work. Yeah, that's great. So it's looking way better. Okay, let's get in the car. For us, we're just gonna use the stock Prigian tank. But there's three basic things you need if you're going to do that. Number one, feed line. It's best to have at least a 3 8 line. I think we're kind of closer to 5 16 here, but we're keeping stock horsepower. That'll work for now. Number two, vent. You're gonna need a vent. And number three, we need to put a return in the tank. Now this tank doesn't have it. So how do we take care of that? Well, there's a couple ways we can do it. The most basic, easiest, cheapest way to do that is to use this existing feed line for the feed and run the return into this vent line and then put a vented cap on it. That'll work. It's not ideal, but it'll get it, the job done. What we're going to do is we're going to drill this tank and we're going to modify it. We're going to put another fitting in it and we're going to run a standpipe from that fitting down into the tank so it's a lot closer to the bottom and our return will come in there. We're still going to use the feed line and for here we're going to use it as a vent and then we're going to use the cap how it was intended. Well the next thing you can do is we can go in tank pump and we can replace the sending unit we can modify it, we can put an in-tank pump in here, we can put another fitting in it, and that's the next cheapest and easiest route to go. So, what do you do after that? Well, now we're into modifying this tank, and there's a companies out there that put a unit in here that with AN fittings, a nice high flow pump, in-tank pump that self-sumps, really good setup. There's a few companies. Check them out. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, 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 What's next upgrade? Well, we're talking custom tank, and that's starting to get expensive. The advantages are it'll have a built-in sump, be set up for fuel injection, the sending unit and the in-tank pump, it's all made to order. And that'll be a great setup. You can make the lines however big you want in case you want to get into some boosted application, higher horsepower, stuff like that. And the final option when it comes to your tank is a full-on custom fuel cell. And you can even have a second fuel cell if you want to run dual fuels. And that one can be for when you're at the track or something like that. And that takes a lot more work. But anyways, let's get into putting this together. Next, let's move on to the fuel filters. You have your pickup strainer. This will keep the big stuff. It's usually around 100 microns. And it goes right in your tank, right in front of your pickup or your pump. And it gets rid of the big stuff so it doesn't make it into your fuel system. The next thing you can run is a pre-filter to your pump. Isn't a bad idea if you got an old tank and you're running the inline pump option. So you have to make sure that the pre-filter is about 100 microns. You don't want it too fine. Now, after the pump, we're gonna plumb in a 10 micron fuel filter. This is just a standard fuel filter. It's got an in, has got an out, or doubt, see? Out. All this does is filter the fuel. This little beauty is a filter regulator. This will regulate your fuel pressure and filter it. This came on the Corvette. Why do we want to use this as opposed to that? Well, it has to do with your fuel system return. If your manifold has a return, like we do on the Prigian, then you can use just a standard filter. What's the advantage of that? The longer return line makes for a cool fuel system. Keeps the temperatures down and it'll help your pump last a lot longer by getting that continuous flow through it. Now this, the advantage is you don't have to run near as long of a return line back to the tank. Disadvantage is, well, your pump's laboring a little more and the system isn't as cool. It's not running as cool, the pump might not last as long. I'm not just gonna say it's gonna die anytime soon, but that's the disadvantage of that type of system. Now, where would you use one? Well, this return system. If you look here on our LS engine, you can see we got two lines. There's our feed line, there's our return line, 
and that's our pressure regulator. It is factory regulated with a vacuum line. You don't have to regulate this. You can just run your two, two lines. That's where you're gonna use the single fuel filter. Now looking at this, we got an LS1 intake on here. It's only got the single line right there. That's where we use the Corvette fuel filter to help regulate this and have a return back to the tank. All right, let's talk clamps. The clamps! Right? <laughs> and just like fuel lines, they're not created equal. Let's start with this nice thumb twist clamp. This is great for carbureted engines and low fuel pressure lines where you want to replace a filter or something like that. You put one on either side of the filter. It's a quick way to remove the filter. You don't need any special tools. You can replace it on the side of the road. That's great if you've picked up an old vehicle, you're uncertain of the fuel tank condition, and you figure you're going to be changing filters a lot. You might have seen another channel use these quite extensively for that very reason. Next, very similar, is this style classic worm clamp. It's got the screwdriver or you can put a socket on it, tighten it up. Now, the disadvantage of these is they can't have a lot of clamping force. Imagine I'm holding this fitting in my two fingers like that. I've got a fair bit of force, but something can come along and pull it out. Where would you use this? Well, you might use it on places where you don't have a lot of room and can't get that big thumb in there. So this would go maybe down by the fuel pump or something like that. This right here is rated for fuel injection. It can put a lot of clamping pressure on the line which is what we need because I showed you that those lines are very stiff. And that's equivalent to having my whole fist holding onto this thing. That's a lot harder to pull out of there. So last thing we're gonna talk about are these. I know these as Adele clamps or rubber isolated clamps. And they're great for running your lines, your hard lines or your soft lines, using some self tappers along the way to keep them out of danger, to route them where you want them to go. They're a good way to isolate your lines, good way to isolate some of your wiring. Great to pick them up in different sizes, highly recommend them. However, use them sparingly because, well, the more holes you drill and stuff, you know how that goes. And last but not least, keep one of these things handy when you're working with fuel system. Trust me, I've learned from experience. the good experience fortunately i've always had one nearby and it didn't end in complete disaster more or less all right let's get into putting all this together got our fuel system kind of plumbed up but what am i doing well i'm going to pressurize the tank a bit and try to force some fuel up to the fuel pump and i got it regulated down to a low pressure and i'm also going to have my hand here sealing it so that we don't over inflate the tank. Those pumps don't like to pull, but they push very well. So we're gonna try to help it out, push some fuel up to it, and then it should be able to prime itself and go from there. So let's give this a shot. I'll leave that cap on loose for now because we don't have the vent hooked up. As I said, we'll take care of that later. We'll put that fitting in there. We're just testing it out right now. And I don't have a vented cap, so let's try this out. <clears throat> okay, I hear the pump. We're gonna go see if we have any leaks. Okay, see we got our pump here and we have a leak, lovely. So we're gonna have to take care of this. That's not good. It looks like our fitting's loose, so we'll get a wrench on that and we'll tighten that up. Okay, I think we got our fuel leak taken care of. Just a minor one, didn't have the connection quite tight enough. We'll go cycle the key again, check it again. If everything's good, we'll hit the key, see if it lights off. Yeah, you can see we've got fuel going through the return line now and that's leaking so we're gonna have to take care of that but let's go check the pressure line my screwdriver hopefully that'll do the trick let's cycle it one more time see if we still have a leak 
Well, that's looking pretty good, so, well, let's try hitting the key. I think we have success, folks. Uh, now, obviously, I'm not going to leave this Tygon tube on here. That'll get replaced with a proper fuel line. This is just kind of a test system. And we still have to do a couple other things, like put that fitting in the tank, which we'll walk you through when we get it. Okay, so one of the last things we're going to do with modifying our fuel system, as I said, we can put a vented cap on it, but I want to do one step further. So we're going to put this bulkhead fitting in there and put it in right here. And drill a hole. I've coated my drill bit in grease. This does two things. It will help reduce the shavings and the filings that go in here. And it'll help keep the bit lubricated, less chance of spark since this had fuel in it at one point fairly recently. We've let it air out a fair bit, but we don't want to take any chances. So we're going to drill that, put a fitting in, and uh, see how it goes. Wish us luck. And there we go. We drilled our 9 16 hole. Our fitting will go in just like that. Take our nut, put it on the back side. We're gonna make sure this is nice and flat and smooth, so we're gonna deburr it. And then uh, we're gonna put some sealant on here to seal it all up and put that in there. And we should have a good return. Yeah, there you go, you can see our fittings in. We've got an O-ring, a washer, and a nut on the bottom side, sealing it all up. We'll put a little silicone, Vaseline resistant silicone on this side, just to make sure. And then we can thread in our return line. And here you have the finished product. We got our feed line going here. This will be our return line. And this is our vent using the original vent line. So we don't have to run a vent cap on this and it's uh, it should work pretty good for this system. This line's honestly a little small, but it, it'll work for what we're building. If we need to put more power in, well then we're gonna have to do something with this and put a bigger feed line on it. The return's good size now, so it's fine. Vent's fine, but there you go tanks modified for now it's working it's returning to the tank we've got no leaks awesome all right folks we're gonna try to do something with the pregian that hasn't been done in over 32 years see if it'll move under its own power now I don't have the throttle hooked up so if she won't move under idle it's not gonna move but we're gonna give it a shot Well, I don't know about you guys, but this is a new one for me. 